Uh, good evening, Vivek ji. Good evening. Yeah. So, uh, as a being in the very old age uh, company, Thaisan Kuru, being very famous uh, into Indian industry, specifically into calls and the mining industry, right? And today is the first day of entire mining exhibition. So, uh, how do you? Uh, and you are also uh, working as the key stakeholders for the mining industry and the other support system. So, what do you feel? The overall mining industry is moving towards uh, into India. So, uh, firstly, uh, great to be speaking to you. And uh, I have to say, after the pandemic, it's great to have everybody in the industry together. Uh, it's uh, turning out to be a fantastic event. I've had the chance to go through there. A lot of, lot of people out here. A lot of exhibitors. A lot of uh, officials. Various stakeholders. So uh, it does look like that there will be a lot of interesting discussions. Coming back to your question, I think uh, the industry today is um, really in a dynamic phase. We are seeing uh, the impact of strong economic growth, and mining is really at the heart of uh, the economic engine because all the downstream industries depend on, you know, the outcomes from mining. So be it the power sector, be it steel. You know uh, how mining performs has an impact on downstream productivity and uh, growth. Uh, so, from that point of view, I think we are doing quite well, uh, and uh, industry uh, is uh, really going through a good phase right now. That's what I would say. I guess uh, the uh, the Thaisen Group is also very old group in the Indian market, right? and almost you have also completed 75 years with this trip. The Indian is also celebrating. Correct, correct, correct. It's a very special year for us. Uh, we we were incorporated in 1947, and uh, we have uh, really had a wonderful 75 years in India. And today, the beauty is that not only are we catering to the Indian market, but we are uh, also active globally out of India, and uh, supporting our clients worldwide. And uh, that is really a matter of great pride for all of us at Thyssen Group Industries India. That's right. So 75 years from the Indian independence, but as the India born, reborn, the same day you have, your company has been started. So if you can uh, tell us the the reformation of the overall APC industry or the uh, process industries. Yeah. So I think uh, the industry has matured definitely quite a bit. There have definitely been phases where uh, the industry went through its ups and downs. And uh, I think more and more people are realizing uh, that, you know, the value of having systems, processes, you know, within the industry is so valuable. And on the other side, you know, even clients have matured in terms of how they are procuring uh, and the norms and qualification criteria that they are setting when they are selecting uh, their project partners. So I, I do see a good future. Uh, and uh, I think um, uh, on the other side, uh, we have also seen the evolution of technology. So we have been fortunate uh, that, you know, over the years, uh, we have been at the forefront of innovation in the mining sector in India. And uh, even going forward, uh, you can expect that Thyssen Group Industries India will continue to drive sustainability and digitalization uh, across the industry. That's fantastic. So coming uh, back to the uh, overall industry, right? What are your strengths? Uh, while uh, because you are also working with the many of the almost all type of industries, right? So what are your key strengths and what are your deliverables while you discuss with your clients? Yeah, one of course is the quality of the product and the performance that it delivers. Uh, that really is at the heart of uh, what we do. And we are very proud of the uh, engineering capability, the technological capability that we uh, stand for. So, so that is, I think, core. Uh, and also, I think what we have uh, done is over the years, the team has really built up a, a very strong project execution capability. So these are skills uh, which are some of which are generic, but also you know acquired in the context of our industry, in the context of the products that we offer. And uh, that is also, you know, a big strength that we have apart from the technology piece. But to be able to execute complex and challenging projects in remote areas, which is what we typically find in the mining sector. Uh, it's definitely not an easy sector to operate in, uh, but I think it requires discipline, perseverance, commitment. Uh, and uh, I think we stand for all of those.
absolutely so uh, once you said that the uh, in fact majority of your projects are into remote areas right the industry are facing many more challenges not only your industry but the other industry typically like the manpower or the technology adoptions so these two are the major critical problems wherein the every industry fails into india so how do you uh, survive with this challenge so definitely uh, finding the right quality of manpower to execute is uh, always a topic when we are doing construction in remote areas so we do uh, you know rely on partners over the years we have built up a good set of partners who support us consistently across various locations and on the other side you know we are trying to do more and more uh, in shop which means that there is less work to do on site so the erection process is simpler it's faster it's more efficient mm. and on the other side because we are doing more work inside the shop we can ensure a greater amount of quality uh, in the products that we are delivering so this is how we are trying to you know uh, overcome uh, the challenges however i have to say every site is a unique experience it's a new experience and we have to gear up to tackle the specific challenges for that project so uh, the if we talk about the industry transformation like coming to the oldest part wherein the machine has just started now we are talking about industry 4.0 or the iot we can say so how do you adapt these technologies to your projects so we are definitely looking very very closely as at all opportunities for digitalizing our products uh, just to share with you our uh, center for uh, digitalization our technology center for digitalization for the entire group is uh, based also in pune where we are so we collaborate closely with them and also we have an in house team which is focused on digitalization topics so we are constantly working on new ideas new initiatives uh, which look at existing products which look at new products which look at the kind of issues and problems our clients are facing in their day to day operations and how we can address them through uh, digital uh, ways and means so typically you have adopted a lot of technologies starting from the oldest technologies right a part of mining industries which are your core sec- segments or the sectors you are working in so we operate uh, clearly across mining where we are a leading player we also make cement plants so we are a leading player in the cement industry in india as well uh, we build uh, boilers and power plants uh, where we have uh, i would say the best cfbc technology in the country and also waste heat recovery uh, for uh, cement steel and various other sectors and then also we have biomass boilers uh, that we that can work on critical biomass then apart from energy uh, we also have uh, sugar and we build sugar plants uh, in india and across the world and uh, there also we are market leaders in the space of centrifugal machines which is one of the critical equipments for uh, sugar factories and also uh very specialized ffes and various equipments uh two roller mills so there again in the sugar industry we are uh, none of the leaders uh with regards to the equipment and services that we provide so you know as you can see across each of these segments be it mining be it cement be it uh, energy and uh, sugar uh, we aspire to and uh, always seek to maintain a leadership position in whatever we are doing so typically uh, while we have uh, recently gone through one survey which is uh, by the government of india the majority of infrastructure projects are being uh, cost overrun or the time delayed right so what do you foresee into your projects this kind of problems or how do you overcome this challenge yeah i think uh, in recent times of course due to the covid pandemic we have seen a lot of uh, delays and uh, understandably so because uh, there were many many disruptions in the supply chain there were issues with contractors and their ability to retain uh, contract workers i think that phase we are gradually out of now going forward speaking in more general terms uh, the, the biggest issue i have seen in epc projects is change of scope and most clients uh, are not always clear or don't always have the full inputs at the time of ordering out and therefore at various points in time if there are uh, if there is reengineering required or if there are changes in scope then definitely that has an impact on schedule uh, time and cost uh, so we always uh, try and encourage our customers to you know 
uh, think through and we also help them think through uh, what is the scope uh, that they really want, they really need given the specific situation that is there on the ground. And this uh, requires from our side clearly, you know, extensive site visits mm -hmm. at the time of bidding. It requires extensive discussions. And I do believe that time spent uh, like that upfront really has a dramatic impact on the overall quality of execution, speed of execution, and helps in bringing overall cost down. Absolutely. So coming to the uh, EPC part, right? The EPC involves a lot of activities, starting from engineering and the project procurement and execution as well. So a part of that, do you do the feasibility or the analysis for your client? Yes, we do that. And uh, in fact, on the mining side, we also help with mine planning. So that's a service recently we have added on because we realize that we have technical solutions that uh, many customers may not be aware of. If they are aware of, they don't know how to you know, incorporate it in their mine planning scheme so that they can extract the maximum value from those products. So we have built up that capability over the last four years where we are uh, intervening and providing the right kind of inputs to our customers for them to be able to you know, configure their uh, plants uh, accordingly. We do that for all of our uh, sectors. So be it cement or be it um, uh, the energy space or be it the sugar space, uh, we do spend quite a bit of time upfront with our clients, helping them think through uh, their situation, their requirements, and then look at our portfolio and see how best we can configure it for them so that they get the best outcomes. That's great. So typically, while we adopting the technology, there are uh, multiple technologies. In fact, we have gone through some of the uh, players into this exhibition, like AR, VR into the entire industry wherein anyone can have the site analysis or the surveying through the technology and support. Do you use such kind of technologies? So where uh, possible, we try and find the right partners to help us, uh, you know, do these kind of assessments. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, if it's a brownfield facility and especially if we have worked there, then we are usually well aware of the situation, circumstances, what works, what doesn't work. So I think that's the other advantage we have with 75 years uh, on the ground there is a lot that we know and understand about, you know, how to get things done on the ground. Yeah. You already have your database, client base, wherein you know everything. We have learned all our lessons. So, <laughs> so we are, you know, uh, and I, I personally, you know, my internal message is, you know, every mistake is an opportunity to improve going forward. So we look at uh, each project that we execute quite critically mm -hmm. and we try and derive every time what are the uh, learnings and areas for improvement. And that's, that's you know, what, what is important is sharpening the saw constantly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really focus on that so that we are always getting better. That's really fantastic. So the in well said that there is every mistake, there is an opportunity, right? And without mistake, no one can succeed. So it is the first step towards the success or the new learnings. And without learning, nothing can be done. And in fact, engineering field, wherein we see the every change is, is the result of mistakes. Correct, correct. Yeah, very rightly said. Uh, and uh, having said that, I think we the important point is not to repeat the mistakes. Yes, because if you're repeating mistakes, then you're definitely not learning from past experiences. So that is where... Uh, we, we have tried to create that learning, um, uh, you know, culture and also because we are, uh, in many cases, we work with our customers well into, you know, their operations through service, support, asset management. Mm -hmm. uh, we do bring back a lot of insights around what are the practical issues that they are uh, facing with our equipment or with competition's equipment. And we try and make sure that in every subsequent generation that we, of new designs that we put out, we are addressing those topics uh, structurally. Yes, sir. Uh, so what, what would you see the future of this kind of APC industries will go towards? Do we enter in with the robotics uh, for the installation of the projects or something? No, I would say at the heart of the APC industry uh, is, you know, a competitive and compelling product. And many a times people forget when doing an EPC project, they look at an EPC project and really forget that it is, what is the outcome that they are trying to deliver from a performance point of view. And that's the cultural shift we have tried to bring into our company. You know, the pro project is an opportunity to deliver a great product to our customer. Uh, but the key thing is it has to be a great product, right? So it has to perform it has to meet the expectations, uh, it has to, you know, have the efficiency aspects to it. 
Sure. And uh, it has to be something which creates an impact for the customer. Hmm. If it is the case, then you know clients want you because of that product. Hmm. And uh, you know the EPC then becomes just a vehicle for us to deliver that to the customer. Well, we see that the uh, majority EPC players are not working in the life cycle of the entire thing. They only see that the capital and the installation is and you are already being there into 75 years of industry. What would be the maximum life cycle of your the oldest installed project? So I met a client, he told me that we still have a machine from the 1950s wow. uh, working in his mining uh, location. I can't disclose the name. Similarly, on the sugar side, you know, one of the earliest mills that we supplied is still in operation. So again, from the 1950s. So, so I think that 70 years of life cycle is already there in running example. Yeah, but I would not encourage customers to wait 70 <laughs> years before they make the next improvement. Uh, you know, those are two very specific cases where, of course, some refurbishment revamp has been happening. Uh, but usually now with the current generation of products, I think there are significant benefits on productivity, performance, uh, safety. Uh, and also, you know, uh, managing downtime. So their reliability factor has gone up significantly. So uh, I think uh, that's, uh, yeah, products, our products are robust, long lasting, uh, but then technology over our time gives you a bigger dividend. So, so I, I would say, uh, you know, most projects, uh, you know, 20, 25 years out, either a major refurbishment uh, or, you know, definitely looking at the next generation. That's really fantastic. So coming uh, to the downline of the entire life cycle wherein the plant can generate the revenue of four, five, six, or more than that times 10, 100 times the viable. So the viability of the entire ecosystem can be more. Correct, correct. And uh, I think, uh, you know, it's that robustness which creates the trust and confidence and which is why, you know, customers keep coming back to us, right? And uh, I think that uh, reputation, that... Uh, image in the industry is hard earned and uh, we try our best always to you know live up to it to maintain it keep that going thank you very much uh, mr vivek ji uh, you. for your time and thank support you time. with uh, specific insights of 75 years of legacy with the indian as well as the reborn of the india as well as your company and support to the indian ecosystem for the entire industry thank you very much. thank you it was a pleasure speaking to you